Good morning, church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we are going to move into Isaiah chapter 35. And Isaiah chapter 35 is the uh, connecting passage to Isaiah chapter 34. So we just finished Isaiah chapter 34. We spent three days talking about the severity of the vengeance and the judgment of God against the ungodly. Now that produces the response of Isaiah 35. So you can't really understand 34 unless you understand 35. And you can't really understand the blessing of chapter 35 if you don't understand the severity of the judgment in chapter 34. We say this many times, but God's love, his character of love, contradicts his judgments in no way. There is no contradiction between love and judgment because the judgments of God is what produces the love and the joy and the gladness and, and the holiness and the righteousness and the peace that will take place on the earth. So 34 and 35 go together. Now, a lot of times we understand what 35 talks about because a lot of times in the church, this is what most people focus on. It's the blessing side of God's return. Jesus returns to the earth and it's it's the blessing. It's the end time harvest. It's deliverance. It's, it's those amazing things. But very few people talk about the severity of what comes before with the judgments of God. So we spent three days on the judgments of God. We'll probably only spend one day on chapter 35. We may spend two days, but probably just spend just one day on chapter 35. A lot of these things you may have already heard before, but it is a powerful thing to remember that the judgments of God, the severity of vengeance, the violence of what will take place will lead to a result. You know, the, the world is not off track. God is still in control and it's leading to a desired end. We are going somewhere. And that place that we are going is chapter 35. So we're going to go ahead and pray. And then I just want to jump right into it. We're going to read all of it today. It's only 10 verses. And then we'll take a little bit of time to talk about it. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son spiritual seed sown producing in our body mind will and emotion transforming us by the renewing of our mind conforming us to the image of christ growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of christ god we love you and we thank you in jesus name amen and amen we'll go with me to chapter 35 we'll just start in verse one and the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing, the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the deserts. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. And the habitation of dragons, where each lay, shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs, the ever and everlasting joy upon their heads. 
They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sing, sighing shall flee away. And that's very powerful. And I say this is a chapter that a lot of times people will understand very easily because there is many worship songs related to chapter 35, which is a song. I mean, that's that's a powerful thing. It says the tongue of the dumb sing. They sing the song of Isaiah. And um, I believe it's Maverick City worship, Maverick City Music that did the song Isaiah's song. You know that the barren land will become uh, will be filled with water, streams in the deserts, de highways where there is desert. I mean, these things are sung of so often in the body of Christ, which is Isaiah's song about the ultimate redemption that comes after the vengeance. And so that's just a very powerful thing to remember. There is a plan and the plan will end in holiness. I mean, it's the way of holiness. So I want you to just always remember that when you're studying the end time narrative, you need to connect the severity of the judgment, chapter 34, with the ultimate promise of chapter 35. See, the, the ultimate promise of chapter 35 and understanding how amazing it will be has to be put in the perspective of the vengeance that took place before. I mean, God's going to come with vengeance. He's going to recompense. He's going to save you. And the way he's going to save you is destroying the enemies. I mean, I say this in churches a lot of times, and it's a, it's a powerful thing to remember, is that when God took Moses and the children of Israel through the Red Sea on dry ground, when they got to the other side, Moses dropped the staff and closed the sea. God said, close the sea. And that's what killed Pharaoh and his whole army. It's not just enough that God delivered you from the land, but he destroyed the enemy that was chasing you. And so you must never forget there is a vengeance. There is a very severe judgment and a recompense that's going to take place on the ungodly so that the righteous may will receive the reward of promise. So these two things are not disconnected. They are ultimately connected together in every way. And we must never forget that. So let's just go through some of these verses. Like I said, we're only going to probably spend one day on this chapter because it's a very easy chapter to understand. You can take many days if you would like and study through each one of these verses because the promises are amazing. We never want to... We never want to downplay the promise. I mean, the promise is glorious. I mean, eternity with the Lord. I mean, that is a glorious revelation and a glorious truth. And that truth is our hope, the hope of the resurrection and eternity with God that allows us to live sacrificially now and to have hope through the judgment that is taking place against the earth. So there's a wilderness, there's a solitary place, but these places will rejoice. They will blossom, It'll blossom abundantly. There will be singing, there will be joy. It'll be the excellency of God. So this place that was barren, this place that did not have joy, this place that was like a desert that had no fruit, no blessing, no hope, that place will turn to singing. So the desert will turn to places where there is streams and rivers. I mean, there's a change that will take place. And that is what's going to take place after the severity of what happened in 34. And it says, strengthen yourself, the weak hands, the feeble knees. Those that are in fear said, be strong. Fear not. The Lord is coming to save you. And so when you look at where you are now, versus where God is going to take you, they tell you, hey, be strong. Do not be overcome with fear. Don't draw back and live like the world does when you see the severity of the things that are taking place on the earth. And nowhere will that be more prevalent than in the generation in which the Lord returns going through the great tribulation. Because it will be those that are in fear that draw back from the Lord are those that are overcome with fear. It's in uh, Luke chapter 21, I believe. It says men's hearts failing them for fear. I mean, fear is one of, one of the ultimate temptations 
to have men draw back from the Lord. I mean, there will be so much fear on the earth. Now, fear comes from a variety of ways, but really two ways. It comes from ignorance. What you don't know causes you to be overcome because it surprises you. You didn't know it was coming. And then two, not only is it a surprise when fear takes place in this way, but it's because you have no hope of what God is doing. That's why over and over, fear not, look at the Lord, trust in God. God is returning to save you. Over and over and over, the way you overcome fear is from the love of God that cast out all fear by understanding God's character, who he is, and what he is doing in the process. See, there are people that have no fear because they know that God is love. God loves his people and God's going to deliver them that stand with him. And he's going to recompense the ungodly with judgment and a severe recompense. It's the vengeance of God. He's coming to save his people. And a lot of times it's hard. It's hard right now in the earth for many people, especially in America, even in Brazil, to understand why. This is so dynamic, what is being said. It's hard to understand this because you don't really understand how bad it's going to be, both in sin and ungodliness and the level of fear and what is going to be taking place on the earth. A lot of times we don't have that perspective of the end times to be able to, to cultivate a perspective of how far this is going to go. You know, and that's why we talk about the judgments and the ungodliness and the severity of it so much. Because like Jesus said in John 16, I spoke these things that you would not be offended. I told you in advance. Same thing with Daniel. It says, those of understanding will instruct many. That we have to be people that understand. We have to have these perspectives. So that way, when these things come to the earth, we are people that are prepared to remain faithful to God that are not overcome with fear. So God's going to recompense and he's going to bring forth judgment and recompense, but he's going to save you. So I want you to understand something. The recompense and the vengeance, it's not against you. See, this is where a lot of people miss it on the end time narrative that they, oh man, those judgments are so severe. I just can't believe God's going to do that to his people. It's like, no, 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 no. Revelation chapter seven is very clear that there is a ceiling of divine protection, both for those of covenant promise, the 144,000, the people of Israel, the tribes, but also there's the ceiling of God's people, the saints, and even through the judgments, they don't touch God's people. And by the time it's ready for the bowls to be poured out, the vials to touch the earth, and the judgment to touch the whole world, the church is raptured at the seventh trumpet. You're not even going to be here for that. So God is not judging God's people. The recompense is against the ungodly, and the deliverance is the people of God. Those that choose to stand with God and those that don't, they receive two very different recompenses based on their own choices, whether you're faithful to God or not. So I just want you to remember that. So God's going to recompense the ungodly. It's all the stuff we talked about in chapter 34. And then God's going to save his people. And then when he comes and saves you, the blind eyes are open. The deaf will hear. The lame will walk. And the, the, the those that are dumb that can't speak, they'll begin to sing. They'll begin to sing this song. So all of that, the sickness and the pain and the sorrow is going to be turned to joy. It's going to be turned to joy. And a song is going to break forth that where there was wilderness, where there was desert, where there was no life, there's going to be water. There's going to be streams. There's going to be a reversal of what took place that caused barrenness and barrenness will produce. God's going to change everything back for good. God's going to bring back life where there was death. Where there was barrenness that produced no life, God is going to bring forth life. Man, is that amazing. The parched ground will be like a pool. Thirsty land like springs of water. I mean, that's just so amazing. 
the place of habitation of dragons, the barrenness that we talked about in 34, the, 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 the evil places, the, the place that rained down, that God destroyed forever, that's going to be like smoke coming up and the pitch and brimstone, that's the place of the dragons, that evil, terrible place, all of those things, and even the deadness of it, we're going to start to see reeds and rushes. I mean, it, there's going to be a highway in the way, the way of holiness. So, I want you just to have a perspective really quick. You've got this severity of judgment poured out in chapter 34. God destroying ungodliness. He looks at his people and says, do not be overcome with fear. He said, there's going to be blossoming. You're going to rejoice after the recompense of the ungodly. So I'm going to destroy all the ungodly. And then what I'm going to do is cause life to come where there was no life. The barren land will begin to produce. There will be streams in the desert. There will be pools in the thirsty land or in the parched ground. Springs in the thirsty land. So we're going to start to see life coming back and producing in the land. You have to remember that during the Great Tribulation, before the Lord's return, there was a drought. Three and a half year drought that took place, just like in the days of Elijah. So the two witnesses are going to cause this drought, and then all of a sudden, water begins to come again. Even if you remember the judgments of God, the judgments of God were so severe that there was no more fresh water to drink. You know, the water turned to blood through the judgments of God, both the sea and the fountains. So there's no more fresh water, and then all of a sudden, God recompenses destroys the ungodly, and the next thing that happens is there's water again, bringing forth life again for the people of God. And then you have the way of holiness, the way to the king. See, when Jesus returns and marches in Edom from Basra up to Jerusalem, he's going to destroy all the kings, all their armies. He's going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem, and then there's a immigration that happens where the Jewish people return to Jerusalem. They return to Israel. Not only that, but as we've studied before in earlier chapters, that the kings of the earth, the new kings, because remember Jesus killed all the kings. He put saints on thrones. They're going to bring gifts to Jerusalem to worship the king of kings, to worship Jesus. So there's going to be a way made, and it's called the way of holy. There's going to be a highway made so that worship may come back to Jerusalem where Jesus is ruling as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And there's going to be no foul, no lines, no ravenous. There's going to be no type of pain and sorrow and ungodly. You'll have nothing to fear. You will take this way so that you may come back to the Lord, so that you may come to Zion with songs, that you may come back to the King. And there will be joy everlasting no more sorrow so chapter 35 is this amazing chapter of redemption and reconciliation that takes place where you see this severity of judgment in 34 followed by this amazing declaration of promise that there's a great reversal and great restoration and great redemption and the way back to the king and this highway of holiness and streams in the deserts but all of those things take place after the severity of the judgment. And when you see how severe that judgment is, you see what God is going to produce, that no unclean thing will touch the highway of holiness. He's producing joy on the face of the whole earth. But to do that, he must remove all ungodliness from off the earth. So you have to read them connected. You can't just see this amazing blessing without understanding that it was the vengeance that produced it. And you can't really understand why it's so severe until you understand the purpose is to produce the blessing of chapter 35. So Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. Testimony say, you sustain, oh, you sustain.
church.